In this video, I'm going to talk about the ground air heat transfer system that I put underneath my Wallapini here in Wisconsin zone 4A. This is actually the, the same video that I have uploaded previously, uh, but some people complained that it was too fast, which I understand. When I originally took this footage, I didn't think anyone would ever see it. I just thought it was for my own personal use. And some people complained about um, the background music and whatever. Um, there's solutions to most of those problems that uh, people could have opted for on their own, but I'm happy to, to make an entirely new narration. So it all began really with a an addition that we were putting on our house, and I knew that since the concrete people were going to be there and the excavator was going to be there, I could just as easily throw on um, this south-facing Wallapini at the same time. This is going to be a 12 by, um, yeah, 12 by 25 space um, when, when we're all said and done here. I had to think a little bit. Might be just a shade bigger than that. It was nice to have them do all this digging. I didn't want to do it on my own for obvious reasons. And since they were there, I had them throw a layer of gravel down as the base um, to collect the moisture from the uh, from the drainage pipes that I use. I'm really impressed by uh, um, the work that they did here. If you look at the other video, you'll see it in more real time. And honestly, you could go to YouTube and watch this in 1.5 time and probably not lose too much in the audio. But it's impressive work anyway. So all told, uh, we are about four feet down um, from uh, what the final result is going to be. You see about three uh, feet of exposed dirt there, but if you can see that apron there that was there, the dirt's going to go up above that apron when we're all done. So it's about, it's about four feet. So that's the first layer. And you see that I've got the, the bigger six inch um, black tubes that are coming down and um, feeding the smaller four inch ones. That was a tip that I picked up from another uh, video that I watched about people doing ground air heat transfers systems. And I think that in, in an ideal world, you know, maybe it would have been even bigger. Uh, but uh, as I'll, I'll show you later, this is doing what, what I wanted to do. So you can see the socks there. So that lets the moisture kind of get out, seep into the ground. I had a dickens of a time finding those little Y adapters to take the six inch and turn it into the four inch. I feel like I should say that this should not be seen as a tutorial. This is um, what I did based on my situation. And some of the reasons why I did what I did was because I was forced by the circumstances of the project to do it this way. It was, um, the best that I could do in this situation, if I um, had unlimited money and uh, certain differences in the topography, I probably would have done things um, differently. But money is always a concern. So you're getting a, a good look at that. That's the, the bottom layer. And I have um, extra pipe drainage tile, I suppose it's called. And I'm going to end up putting in a second layer, which you will hear shortly, which you will see shortly. That's just a good picture for you to look at. So personally, I like having a little background music, but... Um, no one can complain about my musical choice this time. It was important to make sure that 
I had the airflow pointed in the right direction. So um, it starts at the bottom and bottom of the screen and it blows out the other side. I haven't tried it reversing the fans. I'm curious to know what the difference would be. The other pipe that you see there is nothing to do with the ground air heat transfer system. It's a drain pipe that I um, tied into the uh, drainage system for the um, the addition. And I do use it sometimes when I want to just dispose of a lot of water. Or if you look at my Wallapini video, you'll see that I have a water feature. And I've had to drain that a few times and it just goes right, right into that drainage system. So now here's my second layer. And I didn't have as much of the 4-inch um, drainage tile to work with. So, you know, not as good and, um, or not as extensive, I should say. And that looks like, uh, I don't know, what do you think, two and a half feet? And the airflow is still going to go from um, the bottom left of your screen and the, the airflow will push it up to the top right and out. There's only a degree or two of temperature difference between the air coming out on either layer. So um, I, th I think theoretically, if I'd gone even deeper, if I'd had a few more, um, uh, if I, well, just if I could have um, uh, really doubled down on this, I could have really layered it in on two layers underneath and maybe drawn off more of the heat um, from the earth maybe. I mean, I think theoretically, but uh, it, it does pretty good even just with this. So we've got one at about four feet and this one that you're looking at um, at two and a half feet is what it kind of looks like to me. So one of the reasons that I had to do it the way I did it, if you look there, you can see that it, um, and we'll have other views later, I wanted to be able to walk right out into the Wallapini from the, the entrance there. I didn't want to have to step down. Um, and I, it had to be that way because of the water flow away from the house. If, if I could, like I said, if money were no option or whatever, I would have liked to have really buried this. Instead of, um, you know, four feet of dirt around it, uh, you know, maybe even eight, eight feet. But um, I didn't want to have to step down, so that obviously ruins things. And I, I uh, had to get it just right in order to make sure that if there was flooding, the water would go out of the Wallapini. So here you're going to start seeing the, um, the finished product, as it were, um, start coming into shape. The, there are two tubes there. Those are the um, outflows. And uh, there's about um, I don't know, 12 to 18, probably 18 inches of um, good topsoil put on top of um, kind of an inferior quality. To give me at least some option of planting right in the ground, which I, I haven't really done yet. I've done everything in pots so far. But, uh, and I have these raised beds, which with even more topsoil. So I wasn't too worried about the soil quality on, on the bottom, but I did want to have some, some top soil to work with on the top. So you see I have several um, raised beds there. And you see the contractors are putting the roof on as we go here. And if you look at my um, Wallapini tour videos, you'll see this is, uh, you know, it looks, a, a, I mean, remarkably different. But I could already see it in my mind's eyes when I started. Those blue barrels, uh, were to, they were put in there um, to help uh, give a little bit of structure and firmness of for that raised bed. I knew it would sag out and the pressure of the dirt would um, push out and that stop that. All right, so here in a minute, we're going to have a chance to look at the inside of the Wallapini now that the ground air heat transfer system is all done.
So those are the two fans that are um, connected to those two pipes. You can you see the temperatures there. Uh, this was this video was taken that you're looking at now maybe a month ago. 52 and 53 degrees at the top. I have sensors at the very top. Each of those fans uses about 30 watts. Something that I can keep an eye on. And uh, if I don't have links to these fans in the description, um, I will eventually. So I have that other um, thermostat there in case I have the fans off and I can't see the temperature. So you see the pipes, they go all the way up to the very, very top. So it sucks the hot air, the hottest air that's available. And it's going to suck that down using those fans, which maybe we'll see again here. There they are, using those two fans there. And it's going to pipe it underneath the ground. You saw the depths before, all the way to the other side of the wall of peony in the corner. That fan is used to um, help circulate the air. And it blows the warm air across the center of the wallopini. The warmest air goes right up there, and I have the insulation there uh, this year because I was just losing too much heat as it would go up that side. And I wanted to conserve as much as I could. I want to be rethinking that. I always re rethink everything. I just, I'm not saying it didn't work. I'm just saying it's something that I, I will evaluate again. So this one shows the temperature inside the wall of Pini and outside. There's an in is the top and the middle number there is the outdoor temperature when I'm doing this. I actually have the, um, uh, the heat source turned off at when I was filming this because I was testing to see how low it would go without heat. And I have some thermostats, uh, th thermometers taking the uh, temperature right now. So 51 degrees on the one and you kind of have to strain to see, and, but about 50 degrees out that one. So like, like I said, a two degree spread maybe between the two depths of circuits. And you saw what the temperature was um, coming in. So it gets uh, cooled down to that by the time that it gets out. So the way that you know it's basically working is you know it moderates the temperature. When it's uh, winter, it you know blows about 50 degrees. And when in the summer it's a little bit warmer and it helps to cool the place down too. So it works. Um, uh, both in the hot and the cold. So, you know, this wasn't, it's not a tutorial. Uh, it's something that, that works for me. Um, you, you can see with your own eyes that, um, you know, it, the system is, is working. I do have to provide supplemental heat. Um, that is more because of what I'm growing in there, I think like cut the coffee plants. I don't know if you could recognize them. Um, but, uh, you know, if I didn't mind it getting cooler, the wallopini would probably drop to, uh, I don't know. It really depends on a lot of factors. Like if, is it windy out? We'll say at the lowest 40 degrees and you could grow spinach and other things in there year round if you really wanted to, but I have to warm it because of what I'm growing in there. And that's my dog, one of the dumbest animals on the face of the planet. But um, you get to meet him here. He barked during this, so if the timing of the video is off, blame him. Okay, well, thanks for watching. Um, hopefully it was a better experience for, for some of you. If it was, this was too slow, I do have the other video. Like I said, it's the same video, me with a slightly di different narration. But um, 
this one is slowed down. Uh, like and subscribe. Go ahead and ask your questions. Um, I'm happy to take them. Thanks for watching.